Go ahead and call the Douglas County Board of Commissioners Transportation Committee uh, uh, Tuesday, April 16, 2019 to order. Um, as an order of business, let's go ahead and do go around the room. This 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 particular meeting, um, unlike all of our meetings, that is actually filmed. So we just want to let people know that that it's in here that you are on camera. Everything is subject to open record and on replay. All right. That being said, we're going to go around the room and just acknowledge everybody in the room. I'll start to my right with our county administrator, uh, Mark Teal, county administrator. Uh, Jessica Theriot, assistant to Mark Teal. Jerry Watson, Transit Services Director. Go Valentine, a Transportation Director. Justin Rising with Transitions Community Solutions. Debbie Osbacher with Transitions Community Solutions. <coughs> Jamal Shepard, Transit Coordinator. Janet Willis, Compliance Officer, Connect Atlas. Matt Levin, Risk and Safety Director. Very good. Good luck there. Danielle Crow, Marketing Consultant for Connect Douglas, part of the collaborative firm. Very good. Anybody else back there? Uh, Eric LaVorn, External Relations Director for Exponent Systems. Thank you for all being here. No problem. Thank you all for being here. All right. I'm Kelly Robinson. I'm the Chairman of the Transportation Committee. And this meeting is typically facilitated by our Director of Transportation, so Mr. Miguel Valentin. Take us through. Yes, sir, Chairman. Uh, first order of business, business would be to uh, approve, approve the minutes of the March, our regular last uh, March 19th uh, meeting. Okay. As all the voting members taking a chance to take a look at this, all right. Um, I'm assuming the silence means yes. So, yes. can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Sounds like five votes. No nays. All right. Okay. Uh, first order of business on the agenda is a. We have two minutes. I'm sorry, we have two a meeting minutes. Yes, we have two meeting minutes. We have a special call. <coughs> which are April 9th. April 9th. All right, so we'll need to uh, we'll need to approve the uh, uh, April 9th special call uh, meeting minutes as well. I'd like to have a motion. Motion approved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Days. Okay, next we're going to have a, uh, a report from Transit Services uh, related to our grant application. Relating to our uh, grant application for CMAC plans through the Federal Transit Administration, as you can see through the uh, email that I'm passing out that I just received this morning from, from FTA. Uh, we've jumped through all the hoops. Uh, everything is good to go. Right now, all we're waiting for is the Region region 4 FTA Administrator to sign off on the, uh, the award so we can have the Board of Commissioners to execute it. So we're moving forward on that. And what I would ask uh, the committee today is for to go ahead and recommend that we put this on the agenda for the uh, May 7th Board of Commissioners full meeting uh, to accept the, the grant award. I um, think we'll be done by then to give it accepted. <coughs> yes, sir. yes sir. If it's not, we'll pull it off. But I'm confident that between now and then we will have have the go ahead to execute the award. I make a motion that this committee makes a recommendation to the full board of commissioners to accept um, the, the CMAC FTA funding um, on the May 6th and 7th work session of legislative meetings. We got a motion. So moved. All right. Any more discussion? Second. Any more discussion? County Administrator, are you okay with this that we're moving? Yes, sir. We're good. We put this out here. Okay, we're good. Okay. All right. We got a motion to second no further discussion. All in favor say aye for the recommendation. Aye. Aye. I only heard three. Mark, you say aye? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Any nays? Motion carries. All right. Keep moving. We got it. Okay. The next item on the agenda uh, is a marketing update from the collaborative firm. Okay. Danielle, Danielle Crow. 
Thank you. We're having some technical difficulties right now, but I can <coughs> quickly and share a couple of items. First of all, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it was a pleasure to see Connect Douglas featured in the State of the County address and to hear the good news about that. Uh, some of the things that I can quickly share is that we are currently in the planning process for our next Community Connections Lunch and Learn, which will be scheduled on April 30th. Invitations will be going out uh, on tomorrow, and if there are any recommendations for those organizations, uh, people or um, the committee is allowed to submit those as well. Uh, we are also collaborating with the Economic Development Authority and the Douglas County Chamber of Commerce to plan the third Lunch and Learn, which will be specifically for businesses. And so once that date and more specifics are available for that, we will share that as well. Um, another item that we can share at this time is that um, we will be installing a, another large-scale collateral piece uh, within the Arbor Place Mall. One of the tenets has always been to go where people are, and Arbor Place Mall is not only important to Douglasville, Douglas County, but the entire region. And so there will be a sky, sky banner installed in the food court, which is the most um, highest traffic area in the mall, um, bearing the Connect Douglas logo, as well as the um, branded cutaway, a photo of the branded cutaway. Uh, lastly, we will also share some of the upcoming community outreach initiatives that we have. We will be uh, participating in the Lee Road Town Hall on Wednesday, um, the Taste of Douglasville on May 18th, as well as the Hydrangea Festival coming in June. Another item that we can share is that uh, the direct mail piece, which was approved in April, initially designed um, in February. Uh, will be going out as soon as the PO is uh, authorized uh, and the printer receives payment for that. Um, all systems are go on that. Um, another <coughs> item upcoming is the paratransit plan, which I'm sure uh, transit team can elaborate on. But in conjunction or in support of the public hearing, which will be coordinated in conjunction with the VOC meetings, there will be two public information sessions. Um, paratransit primarily impacts um, potential riders who are more than likely seniors or people with disabilities who are unable to get to the proposed stops. Um, and so there will be two public information sessions for people to learn more about that and that will be promoted in conjunction with the Department of Communications. But the proposed dates and locations for those are April 22nd at Senior Services Center and April 30th at the Woody Fight Senior Services Center. And that is the gist of what we have to share today for our update. Are there any questions on those items? Yeah, a couple questions. Just to, mm -hmm. you know, I won't belabor it. This was just sort of a, yeah, a standing update, so let's put it that way so I'm not afraid to be specific. Um, you mentioned <coughs> the lunch and learnings, which I get. Um, and you might have mentioned it, but I was focused on the lunch and learns, which is, um, let's assume, um, and, and Director Watson, can I still use June 1 as just sort of a baseline date or start? Yes, sir. Right. So if I'm at June 1, and this is basically, um, I'm going into May 1, I mean, we're, we're probably two weeks away, then come back to the need for the, the broader mailer. Um, I don't want to lose sight of that. Can we just, um, one more time, for the record, um, how we plan to communicate not only to the target audience, um, uh, and it's not to invalidate or marginalize all the other communication and marketing plans, uh, but it was a specific directive that was asked for uh, or presented, which is I mail it to the broader, um, the broader, the timing is perfect. Um, I'm sure welcome. We're, we're, I'm right at the point of asking um, the question on the status on Ms. Uh, uh, Crow just gave us an update on collaborative efforts so far up to date. Um, very good, and I'm asking a very specific question without rehashing that, which is about the mailer to the broader um, county as well as to the directed um, target market. Gary, can you just tee that up softly and then let her weigh in? 
So Madam Chair, you have to speak. Well, <clears throat> we're trying our best to go ahead and, and get the initial mail mailing piece. Uh, everything is ready to go with that. The hold up right now is, is getting the purchase order uh, approved through the, the purchasing department. Uh, uh, our printer is, is sitting already as soon as uh, they get that, that piece from us. And, and then as soon as, as we get, get that one out, that's going to be time to turn around and, and get the second one okay. out. So we're, we're a little behind, so it meant so there's a ministry to hold it up. I mean, Mark, what can we do to get it through our purchase order? Is there something that's holding it up specifically? No, no, I didn't know anything about it being held up. Uh, uh, it's, it's, we've had it up there probably a week or so. Uh, and yeah. as, as of this morning, it hadn't been turned into a purchase order. Right, we need to get that out then. If it's just, okay, do we know, can we just take that offline? Mm -hmm. Mark, we just get this unstuck and get Gary to his printer and get that one. Okay. We're moving that here. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, keep going. Uh, then, then I sit on that. I don't have any further more, more questions regarding that. Um, any other questions for Danielle on the status update? Mm -hmm. So Gary, are you pleased with their efforts in preparing us for this launch? Uh, I mean, it sounds like they, they've got a, a pretty full marketing strategy. Um, I, I, again, I, I've heard no objections. I've heard nothing, but people are beginning to, to be more visible about it. Yes, I'm, I'm totally pleased. Um, we basically we're we're going into a full court press mode now with a, a, a total blitz, uh, a multi uh, acid blitz, uh, where we're not only, not only uh, we're really making a concentrated effort to go out to the people and reach the people as opposed to them coming to us. And, and I think that's important. Again, we, we recognize that everybody does not um, get our, we've got 150,000 citizens. Our what's happening in direct mail communication is what, 15,000 people, that's 10%. Everybody's not looking at direct TV, DC 23. Like we're being realistic and not delusional about how we're penetrating the other 140,000 people. They don't know. Uh, that's in general, but then your target market, uh, there is a digital divide, there is a communication divide, and I think the high touch has to be, it, it, I, while I appreciate social media, I, I appreciate that everybody doesn't engage in it like one may be if they're actively involved. And so I, I think this is a population that <coughs> really can use it. We need to get out there and do a high touch uh, like you guys are doing uh, these uh, lunch and learns through these influencers, through these people who are in place to sort of give them their information. And I, I think we're on target with that. All right, I'm going to shift gears so we we'll stay on task because I know we've got some guests, but here's a question in general. Um, we, we've got a ridership. This is my mobility options, and we have our fixed route. So I've got fixed route. <coughs> now I've got paratransit. And then ultimately I might get what on demand ride should be. Dial ride. Dial ride. Right. That's right. Based on our plan. And I recognize that fixed route is not supposed to be 100% um, you know, occupied 100% of the time, no more than an airplane, right? Okay. We, we understand that. Um, but if I look at the products and options, and that fixed route serves the same audience that, that she just mentioned, paratransit, meaning that, well, if I'm seeing I'm disabled, right? I'm visually challenged, but I'm still getting on fixed route. We will ride with, with people, uh, which is different than perhaps um, the next person that may have the same challenge with me that may do paratransit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, disabled or some senior person, just not, the two don't mix. Uh, and then on demand, uh, whether it's um, our rural target market, in other words, we don't really need a big route out there, but maybe on demand is more appropriate. Have you, are we prepared to, to sort of migrate through this fast? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just, how are you approaching this? Well, it's, or thinking about that. Well, it's, think about it. it's been my pledge all along, and, and I've said it in a number of public meetings, is, is that once we get the uh, fixed route service up and running and we're comfortable with it, that, that we'll immediately start working on uh, demand response dial a ride. And uh, Justin Rising with Transitions and I have had some conversations about that, and Justin tells us that that's a, a service that he can get up and running fairly quickly. So, so, uh, so the assumption is that we would expand 
Um, that's not a separate contract. That would just be a, a contract augmentation to expand those services over to this group. That would be well, I, I think we would have, it, it would be a, a contract and addition, expansion, yes, sir. Yeah, we'd have to be a separate contract, but still, they got first consideration. Which I, I have no objection. I'm just asking that to thank you. Yes, sir. I, 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 I don't. So, okay. We'll get into them in a minute. So, okay, good. What else you got? I think as far as the marketing and promotion, that's uh, that's it. We, as I said, we're really starting the blitz. Yes, yes. I've seen the videos. I mean, we're getting there, and I, I think we just we want to get ahead of the curve, make sure people are properly educated. My last thing is, and maybe your operations to say, okay, it's great that it's coming, but where am I going to get on? And do we have the, the proper infrastructure? The bus stops, the sidewalks, the shelters. I mean, now it gets real. You know, I've got this big town hall tomorrow, and obviously this is going to be one of the questions I've got to be able to speak to, which is how ready, how shovel ready are we ready to go? We've run these routes, I've heard many, many, many times. I want to know literally where are the bus stops and where's the schedule. So to your point, you know, we're making people aware that the buses are coming, the buses are coming, but that final piece has to be, okay, no more than anything else, okay, here are the four routes, here are the times and the stops. How, how do we get to that place of, for me, that's when we're ready. Everything else is just, well, it's coming, it's coming, it's marking, it's great. But until you get to a place where this is physically where I get on at the bus, where people can sort of line their minds. And we're talking about seniors, we're talking about new people, maybe two buses. We're talking about seniors who may, okay, I need a little help. And people in the middle that are maybe used to them or part-time car owners, never had one, now I gotta do this. How, you know, talk to them. Well, we are we are very close to having that ready for public consumption too. Uh, Jamal Shepard um, has uh, been working on that uh, diligently, uh, also along with the transitions staff to pinpoint those stops and the times at those stops. Um, he can speak to it a little better than I can, but as I said, we are close to. It. I uh, have that for public consumption as well. Miguel, don't want to get too far off this, but can we just use this as a segue to get them to weigh in on this one topic? Sure. Are you okay with that? Sure. sure. Jamal, you want to Jamal, speak to please that? Speak. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes, sir. Uh, as uh, Mr. Gary said, Ms. Debbie and I have been uh, diligently working on getting those schedules together. Uh, just today, before we came up here, we went ahead and went back through all four rounds, uh, identified the proper time points and location, and she's going to go back and get those uh, worked up again for us. And have a finished product for me to look at, if not tomorrow, <coughs> probably later on this evening. <laughs> I know how she works. <laughs> but but with all in respect to all four routes, so we do have the, and also talking about the stops. Uh, we have those identified as well, but we're gonna go out again this Thursday to uh, go over them with uh, safety and uh, risk department. They wanna go out and look at them to see what we have them identified at. And, and the reason I bring this up, this is again, just, I mean, my district, which is the Eastern border, but uh, we know transportation-wise, our shoulders are probably not the best. I'm, I'm literally curious, where are y'all going to put these, right? It's, it's, I'm, I've walked seven and a half miles, and I, I know you're in and out of bike lanes. You're down heels, I'm falling out. My, I'm like, I'm walking late, walk down the street with five bags, and stuff, and they'll be late, and I'm looking at it like, no, I hear you, I get it. And so I'm like, okay, are y'all sensitive to where they have to stand and how our, our, our natural topography is on the hill? It's, it, it's what it is. It ain't, it ain't, it, it's not a flat land, and so I'm just, I, I'm just, to make this work, you, you, it's got to be accessible in the sense that my onboarding, the place of onboarding, has to be sufficient. Um, it can't be a compromise like a sidewalk where we're gonna squeeze everybody in there. Or I mean, I'm not saying build an entire sidewalk down the street, but I think y'all know what the concerns are. So I, how are we approaching that? And this is a collective effort. You're only speaking to one part. But I need my, how are you going to finish but this? If I, if I may, uh, Please. we have been looking, the staff has been looking at those components. One of the things that, that we are cognizant of is that we have targeted certain areas for stops based on uh, our expectation of the, the users the, in, that, in that vicinity. Uh, but it isn't going to be until we roll out the service that will have a better sense, a real good sense, as to whether a particular stuff that we've targeted is used. And so we will, uh, we have a process of assessing, okay, 
this is where we've targeted a stop and it needs certain improvements to make it uh, safe and the way we would like it. Certainly, we wouldn't do an unsafe stop, but there could be deficiencies that we need to remedy. Uh, but we're, we're going to need to look at whether that particular stop is actually one that gets used or not, because we don't want to invest in the infrastructure for a stop when the one downstream from it is the one that actually gets used. So it is an assessment process and we uh, have it in play, uh, but, uh, but again, we, we are, uh, our thinking is that we do not want to make the hard investment, other than signage obviously, uh, until we have a sense of whether it gets used. And there, there are certain MTA requirements to the, the signal when you would put something like a shelter in place at a stop, it, it, it deals with the number of boardings that you would have at a particular stop. That triggers when you start looking uh, at putting amenities. It, no, it's all, I'll, I'll, I'll buy that. I'll, I'll back up a little bit and say, okay, there's a, there's a progression. Stop to bench to shelter, right? It's a progression. Just keep fundamental. I'm going to put a flag and put a pole up stay there. Anywhere you put that, are you aware of, I, I'll use the school board, right? 280 buses, 300 some odd routes, right? Okay, th this this is not nothing new, right? I mean, we know most of them go in the community, kids got to run out and so forth, but we sort of, it's not that hard. Right? And I'm, I'm sure we, these guys got expertise to help us. Like I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a, a simple answer that says that we can tell the public, because they've got questions of where you going to put while you're saying this is the most strategic operational place right here and stuff, like how do you assess what's around it to say like, guys, I'm not gonna fall <coughs> down this hill. And while you're not putting the investment in, you still put me at risk as a citizen. So it's the taxpayer, I'm, I'm the advocate, but the taxpayer says, no, you just can't put it anywhere. Even while you're working through your assessment, there has to be a certain degree of like, okay, I get it. I just can't put this on the side of this trench. I mean, that's all I'm looking for. I'm not hearing. I'm hearing what well, you plan to do downstream. I get the investment part. I'm just looking for the base that wherever we put this, and we're not talking about the stuff that stops at the mall, the stuff like that. We're talking about along those streets, and I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Sure. That, that's all I'm saying. So help well, us speak to that. Let, let me address that this yeah. way. Uh, Jamal has already put a great deal of thought in, into that and where we're going to stop, and that's the very reason that we're going out. Uh, Thursday morning uh, with our director of risk and safety uh, to visualize each stop and to make sure that we're not picking people okay. in jeopardy. Which is why I asked Matt here. This was a setup, of course, I, I'm, I'm, because I, I want to need it because you know I went into a time on and And so it's more of a, okay, guys, we're, we're very close here. We just, we, there's no sense of us uh, making mistakes in how we think about this, right? And so these are things that I'm being asked, and I want to make sure that we don't miss those things. So, okay, I won't belabor it. I'm fine. Madam Chair, are you okay? <laughs> we're rolling here. We got to, you, you okay? <laughs> okay. Miguel, I'm fine. I was satisfied. I, I think I, everything else I can take offline. <coughs> but collaborative, um, they're fine. Thank you for the, for the input. But back when you get to end Very good. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Of all things. The, the uh, next item is, is a uh, discussion about the uh, third party operator contract. Yes. As you know, we've had extensive discussions over the last year or so, and there's been a considerable amount of effort put into how we can structure this relationship so that it works both for the county <coughs> and for the provider. And uh, I, I think uh, we are uh, very close to a point where uh, both of us are comfortable. Uh, I'll let uh, Gary uh, give us uh, an update on, on the details, and then we can have a discussion about uh, next steps. Okay. Well, as, as Miguel said, this, the contract that, that we're presenting to you today yes. is a yeah. result of, of months of discussion, negotiation, and lots of hard work. <coughs> with the Connect Douglas staff, the DOT staff, the Office of Risk and Safety staff, <coughs> other um, county department and staff, and certainly uh, transitions their, their staff to, we feel like we, we've got a contract now that we can go forward with. Um, I'll give you just a couple of highlights on it, and then uh, 
I'll uh, allow Justin Rise in a moment to speak up to the contract if he would want to. But but what we're going to ask that the committee recommend today is for us to uh, present this full contract to the board of commissioners um, at their uh, May 6th and 7th work session and meeting. Uh, uh, for, this, for their approval where we can, can move forward because uh, time is of the essence. Right. Uh, we as a staff have much to do and Justin and his staff have much, much to do. Uh, but um, a few highlights of the contract. Uh, the budget is not to exceed $2 million annually. Uh, that includes payments to the contractor and expenses that will be paid directly by Douglas County, including fuel and maintenance costs. Uh, this is a reimbursement contra uh, contract. In other words, uh, whatever expenses, operating expenses, the third party operator has during a month, they will submit uh, a reimbursement request to us with all the supporting documentation. And we will issue them a check uh, based on their request uh, they also will have a fixed monthly management fee of eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, that we will pay them in addition uh, to their allowable expenses. Did that go inside the two million or that's everything? No, that's that's all inside the two million. Uh, the contract is performance based. There are performance standards that the private uh, operator will have to meet and there's penalties uh, for if those performance standards are not met. And one of the big uh, items that had to be vetted during the contract negotiation and discussion has been the insurance aspect and what the county's responsibility is in that. And uh, Matt Laverne has put in hours literally uh, dealing with that. And we're at a point now where we have, have a satisfactory agreement. Uh, on that. So that's the highlight from, from our standpoint. Uh, Justin yeah, and Jill have approved it also? Yes. Yes. So Jill Dunn, Dunn, Dunn Freeman Mathis and Gary is approved it too. It still needs to go back to Kevin up to final. <coughs> Justin, you want to speak to the contract? Just I appreciate everybody's consideration through it. A lot of times mm -hmm. contracts um, it is obviously a process, but uh, for us as a company that's both an operator but consultants, we feel like it really defends uh, the, the region's interests and the needs uh, to protect the county um, in the way the contract is set up today. Uh, obviously, there is a lot of work that uh, is going to take place in a very short period of time uh, once it gets uh, initiated. Uh, but uh, through everything, I, I think it is a very good contract to support all the needs in general. Okay. So, let me just ask a general question. This is Madam Chair, just about what we're talking about process flow. So, we signed the contract on. Six and seven months, and we couldn't get the help. We assumed that the FT money is here, it's flexed over. <coughs> we're fueling the bus. Um, we're, we're, we're declaring, or we're claiming that June 1st is our goal line. Right? This is where, again, I'm looking for the messaging. So this is a, like I said, partnership. It's a partnership with us that represents the public that says, okay. Right, y'all saying y'all got 23 days, I'm gonna bring this lot. Right, I've got to say something. You can't like turn on June, June 1 and say, okay, go out to the buses are ready. That's not very practical. I, I, I think you can do better. So I, I come from private sector, but I, I can't just turn it on and let them like, oh, by the way, because then now you're losing the time for them to even figure out where it's at. So back to the whole point of communicating ahead of time. That's why I'm like, this has to be synchronized. You, you're consulting, I've done international, so like, come on guys. Um, so what I'm looking for is, the reason we picked you, uh, you were picked, is because of the seasoning. The, the, we were looking for a certain expertise, like you've done this, there's a ramping up. So help us, we're, we're trying to get, without going into a town hall tomorrow, and this is very, very important, and, and because I'm also chairman of transportation, I know I'm the big advocate for this bus is, I need to have that question answered, which is, okay, if we do this, the board approves it, your contract is live, how do we, what's your ramping? Is it a pilot? Is it, hey, we're going to run it for four days, five days? How do we message to the public? I mean, I mean, make it real for us right now. 
I mean, we've been planning and planning, talking about this for almost a year and a half, two years, and a year for you, give or take. And so now here we are in a very practical manner. We're 45 days out. And I'm just, I'm hearing a lot of planning, but it's a lot of loose, well, it, it, like, guys, give me a date. And this will, will, just like me, you gotta be held accountable to it, right? In other words, you got a message to the public. You, you can't dance with them. Um, and so, I mean, this is not a hard conversation. I'm, I'm not, I mean, you'll learn me. I'm, I just, I'm real, I'm looking to hear, like, okay, how are y'all gonna approach this? So get us comfortable. Absolutely. If you don't mind. Um, obviously, there is a lot that is going to take place in a short period of time, but we have lined up right now. Um, the, the big piece for us is the, the hiring of staff. Okay. Uh, we have about 60 applications right now for drivers that are just waiting to be interviewed. Uh, we're on our final review process for our assistant managers and managers roles that will take place tomorrow. <coughs> the big piece of the drivers is, uh, even though we're going at a very competitive pay rate here, um, without the contract firmly in hand, we don't want to go through the process of making the spend the time to hire somebody that can't stay on books for eight to ten weeks while they're waiting on a job. So our entire uh, HR department will basically be up here next week, uh, beginning the hiring process for drivers. Uh, typically, uh, from that point out, we have about a week from there, which is going to be uh, the second and third week of May, yeah. which will be our driver training. And, and for us, uh, as we told you before, our entire process is drivers first. Everybody that's in our company is a driver. So that, that two weeks leading up to that uh, point, which is two weeks out from the June, it's the Tuesday uh, after the holiday, which would be the first day, is two weeks of, of on-location training. Uh, and that's classroom exercises, that's your CPR, your first aid, uh, your pass, your defensive driver. But the other piece would be as well as actually getting behind the wheel. And th that, the beauty of that is, is what we're looking at at that point is really the last two weeks of May uh, being on-the-road advertisement. Obviously, we're not going to be taking any, anybody around from point to point, but the vehicles will be in motion. They'll be running the routes. They'll be making the stops. They'll be looking at the finalized time locations, all the locations. If there's any last-minute concerns throughout the day, we've, we've driven the, the, the trips and the routes and cars <coughs> and buses throughout various days and points, uh, but getting them on the road with training and actual operations will be the final piece that congeals everything together so that we know anything that we don't know at this point. Uh, but the second and third week of May uh, are big for, for uh, training purposes. The first week is, is, a, is our hiring events. Yep. Um, and then the last week and a half to two weeks of the month before we go live is strictly behind the bus, teaching, educating, processing, so that when the, the Tuesday rolls and we start service after the holiday, uh, we're in a position to have staff that are properly uniformed, properly trained, understand the stops, understand the safety components, uh, like you were talking about. Yes, we have locations that are identified as the drop-off spots, yeah. but we also have the ability to stop uh, at locations where people need to be let off. But our drivers have to make informed decisions that they don't just stop anywhere and let them off. We don't want to put them in areas where they get injured. So there is, there is a very strategic training process that will take place, and at this point, we're just waiting for that go-ahead uh, from your team to ours that says the contract's initiated and we can move forward. All right, so, so to that point, this, this is important. You know, you probably, Gary, you know this. You was a, a, everything you just stated, like, where is that in writing? Right, and so, so part of the, the $2 million contract, there was an expectation that a project schedule will be delivered to the Board of Commissioners. They would lay out, you know, I do all this is probably prior to you, but, you know, so, but this is important, that the commissioners need to see this schedule. What, what is our critical path? What is, I mean, what is the goal live? Now, I, we've asked one prior to this, but I think this is the point where, okay, to, to my peers, like, gosh, yeah, for this contract, you need to know how they're going to get there. Lay it out for us. Give me the project schedule. Show me everything, your marketing, your <coughs> operations, your risk, how y'all going to do the first 30 days going up, ramp up, and then 30 days thereafter. We need to see this. It, you know, this is a big contract to us. It, it obviously has annual contract for a period of time, right? And so we're, we're, we're looking for something that we can, we can look at. What does that look like for the first 90 days? And we've never done this before. And it, this is high visible. So while I say like we, and I appreciate you guys like, well, there's nothing to it. For us, it matters. Uh, it's a communication vehicle. Um, I, I mean, there's times where we're not, staff is not always around. Where we need to know what's going on with that. Let me be clear, there will be high scrutiny on this to a certain extent. People are going to be watching this. And I just, this is something that we need. So that's out of the room, Mark. Can you ensure that we get our project scheduled? Because that's, I mean, going into, going into that May 6th vote, 
I'm looking for that. Everything you just said, <coughs> I mean, I've been saying it like, God, y'all are just telling us, and you're telling us, right? If there has to be something in the writing that's like, well, but you said this on this day. Because the last thing I want to be told is like, well, Commissioner Robinson, you said y'all go to live on, you know, so I, somebody's got to get the ring with us on this. So, Jamal, do you have that capacity to create a project schedule that lays out from the time of contract to what he just spoke? Okay, the board has signed up on their part. Show me your plans for getting us to June 1st and then July 1st. Okay, do you have that skill set? Yes, sir. To speak to what you just spoke of, uh, Ms. Deb and I was actually going over their project schedule and she showed, shared with me where we were and what their anticipated moves are moving forward. Mm -hmm. And to that regard, I can request that from her to ensure that it has what you just asked on there for the following days. I need my marketing overlaid on top of your operational plan, right? Yes, I mean, there's two different firms, two different contracts, but we need one holistic picture. So I can, when Madam Chair asks me where things are, I'm not going across four or five different pieces. We need one view yes, sir. of this initiative, a single view. And I'll reach out to Ms. Danielle to see if we can incorporate her schedule. Gary, are you okay with <coughs> yes, we, we We can get that for you, absolutely. But, but you know, I can't emphasize to y'all enough that if, if, if we don't get that contract signed, on um, May 6th and 7th, we just there were things off the table. Yes. No, he brings up a good point, but, but <coughs> you'll get that, but you, 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 without this schedule, this sheet of paper, it's like, mm, it's that important. We can get that. Uh, yes, so yes. I'm, I'm, I'm less concerned about that. I'm just, it's our readiness. Again, it's always staff, okay, it's always no contracts, no money. More, more this, more equipment, more this. Can I get a schedule? Yes. What's an acceptable date for you, Commissioner, to have that schedule? If I can reach out to them. Right, we can take it off line, Mark. Are you yes. okay with that? I can meet with him directly. Mm -hmm. Miguel, you okay? And I can just yes. tell him exactly what I want. Absolutely. We, we can certainly develop that schedule. Uh, one thing that I'll speak to is that uh, the expectation is that we will have the FTA grant approved prior to the May 6th uh, board meeting. Okay. So any, any action would have to be contingent on the funding being in place. Uh, so the schedule will target our expectations. That's fine. If that slides, then we'll just slide the schedule. Hold on. I, I get how it works. I'm a project consultant. I'm certified. I get it. I'm just, I've been asking for this for a while for somebody to be able to talk to me in my language um, that gives us assurances and stuff. All right. Madam Chair, are you okay with what you're hearing? I know we're running here, but we... I know you just coming off the state of the county. You may not be paying attention to us, oh but my, I, oh I, my, you did such a wonderful job. So, um, are you okay? Yes, I just had one question for Justin. Um, you said we have 60 applicants. How many are you planning to hire for 60? Right now, we're looking to employ 40 drivers, mm -hmm. and that's a variety of part time and full time staff mm -hmm. uh, because of the hours of coverage. Uh, where are you advertising? Is it here locally? We work, we work with Indeed, uh, and then we also work with oh, uh, with Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. uh, what we like to target typically is anybody that falls into the chronically unemployed section, we go after that, as well as trying to find any Veterans Affairs locations. Oh. Uh, anybody that is uh, transferring out of the military, uh, we, we seek heavily into that arena as well. Do you take people who are prior Truck drivers, Lyft drivers, Uber drivers, taxi drivers, or you don't you like people who are brand new and you train them? Well, I, mean, I, I have no idea. Sir, some some of our best drivers are people that have ever driven before. Uh, so if, if it's somebody that wants to serve their community in the capacity of driving, uh, we would be more than happy to sit down and speak with them. Obviously, if we have a CDL or prior experience yep. uh, with a successful motor vehicle record, uh, we can bring them in. But frankly, just the desire to take care of the community. Uh, so, our, so again, our best drivers are people that care for the community and the people that are in the community. Uh, and they, we've had people come in before that have been with us four or five, six years now uh, that had no driving experience, but are amazing because, again, they have a care for the community and the people that are in the vehicles. You're managing mm -hmm. them too. So you're hiring, you said, 40 people, <coughs> drivers, you talked about the managers. Those managers are not here, though. They're back somewhere else. Where are the managers? We have not employed the managers yet. Uh, yeah. uh, we have, uh, going back to your schedule, we do have a slide scale that has been in operation since about November of last year. Yep. And really, a lot of it is. And, and luckily, uh, fortunately enough for us, um, the managers are all local individual talent that we've sourced uh, through various uh, hiring uh, meetings. Uh, and what we're at the point now is really as we're, we're 30 plus days away 
making those decisions to bring them on so they can <coughs> the hours of the team. But, but, but to that point, um, do you think it's, it's, it's meritorious? I get the Department of Labor and I get the need to come on using our own, like, have we advertised that on our very transparent yeah. website here in the county? I mean, for us to have yeah, we done it? I don't know if we have or not. Have we? I don't think we have, but I think we, we've left that up to Justin. Okay, that's important. Can we maybe? Not to take you away from what you're doing, but also give it a, a period of time of local consideration, as they say, to our website here. Do you, and maybe you might know the answer to this, do you know if you um, do any other hiring off of that website for companies that aren't city or county <coughs> sites? No, we don't. I'm, no, that's not I'm aware of. Then I, I'd like to take that conversation mm -hmm. offline just to kind of give you our input as to why we might not want to do that. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, just make a note of that. And I guess to some degree, um, I get a lot of conversations where people want consideration, right? right? Um, um, uh, having worked with headhunters, matrix resources back in the day, I mean, a lot of those different firms, um, the relationships between private sector and those firms, um, there's always um, uh, cash flow exchanges, benefits from all of that. Um, I'm just curious as to, we're just looking forward to at least acknowledge that we have. Um, so David Scott has an annual, our, our congressman has an annual um, job there. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we promote his stuff. And, and, and sometimes it could just be a simple a landing <coughs> to push them forward, right? It doesn't really have to be. But there has to be some type of acknowledgement that we get criticized. Wait a minute, you got this big bus. I mean, all these people who work here, live here, do the, the Uber and stuff, and yet they don't know that this exists, that this opportunity. And that, that bothers me. So we can take that offline, but some kind of way they needs to have to have consideration. Doesn't have to be first, doesn't have to be preemptive. They have to have some type of consideration versus you gotta go over there to the Department of Labor. You gotta go over there. When we I'm sure just sat here and did a state of county and talked about how transparent we are and how we're creating this new website or expanding it. And the very thing very next action I'm gonna take as her vice chair is to go against that. Y'all gotta help bridge that gap for us to figure out I mean I think it's just a technical I, I'm, I'm sure what you're thinking is probably there's a reason why, uh, but we just have what? Find some kind of way to promote this here locally, at least to give them exposure to say that they saw it, and then if it's just to bounce it over to y'all or bounce it to Indeed, I mean, I'm not a technologist, but uh, it's, 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 the, the ask is not hard. Um, it's just the courtesy that says that, yeah, we saw you guys, we had you in mind, versus, well, we don't really, we, 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 we came up with a reason why we didn't want to promote on your local site. Can y'all? Yes? Gary? Excuse me, come I mean, in. It, it, it's fine with me. Uh, <coughs> no, no. Mark. Justin Mark. Are you doing mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. How do we get this? I hear you. I mean, I'm fine with whatever his objection is. I don't, I don't even want to. That's fine. But you get what we just want yes, out of. I'll say what. Okay. I, mean, I, I actually believe we can get there. Yes, and we and get there. can get there. This may not be the, exactly what well, you're asking have, for, but we can. Uh, I think we, we can get We have other avenues, such as the uh, Central newspaper, and maybe you can run a map there. Absolutely. And then also uh, <coughs> Chapel Hill News and News. And then we um, are connected to ARC, which is here, Orlando Region Commission, which has an office right on Club Drive. And if you could just leave a the flyer there, at least we sure. engaged our. Our citizens. Right. Just we don't, we don't want to design it for you. We just want here's the objective. Yeah, we're not. We're not going to give anything. We give them up. Okay. So you say you have 60 already? It's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. And, this, and everything pushes to our own our website. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so for you, can uh, just give them an idea of all those sure. Take it offline. Yeah. I know. I know what you said. It may be a. Uh, Maybe a conflict. Matt knows we've had this conversation of, of, of a few things, but we, we can get there, absolutely, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Matt, you know what we're trying to do. We're just trying to be the best of both worlds, but we're not going to expose ourselves. So. Okay. <laughs> Keep us going, guys. I mean, all right, so Madam Chair, I'm, the, I'm sorry. Uh, anything else on this contract that you are you concerned with? I just want to make yeah. sure citizens are have an opportunity absolutely. to engage and involved and perhaps drive the bus in our own community. Yes, uh, but. That's what we would request that the committee do uh, today is to recommend that this contract go before the full <coughs> board commissioners uh, May 6th and 7th, uh, pending uh, final legal review and pending uh, the award of the, the 
FDA grant? I'm pending legal review, pending FTA grant, pending my project schedule, and pending the commitment to put this up on that website or, or some kind of way to advertise. Those are conditionals. Okay. All four. Right? It, this is not just a side administrative. They're all contingent. I'm making it clear. Schedule is my issue. Hers is making sure that locals get considered. Funding is required and understood in the final legal review. Agreed? All right. Okay. That's good. All right. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All right. All in favor of the recommendation and with those four conditions, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Done. Okay. Miguel? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, well, are you guys okay? Do you, you get what we're trying to do? Okay. Thank you. We look forward to it. It's going to be all on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we're just trying to work through the, the I mean, but we're, don't get me wrong. I mean, you have to ask the tough question because you see that we care. We just, you want to do this right. So we just like, just, some of it is just education. It's not a challenge. It's like, okay, help us appreciate what you have to go through so we can advocate for you, right? So that's, uh, we, we're hoping that it's successful. So anyway, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Keep going, Miguel. Can yes, sir. The next item on the agenda uh, is a, a public hearing request uh, from Transit Services uh, in connection with the ADA Power Transit Plan. Aaron? This was actually brought up uh, at the work session yesterday and will be voted on uh, tonight uh, by the full board to have a public hearing related to the Power Transit Plan. Uh, Cut and dry, uh, typical public hearing. But it's not tonight. We're just advertising for it to be next week. Next meeting, yeah. yes, sir. And um, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, this this is a having a paratransit uh, service, a paratransit plan, is part of uh, one of the components of the fixed route bus service. Uh, this is something that uh, Janet and uh, Jamal have been working on. Uh, uh, a, a great deal and, and Jamal just very quickly if, if you and Jane want to give some highlights of the paratransit plan yes well the the key thing with the paratransit plan is uh, Mr. Garrett was saying it's a uh, complimentary to all fixed route um, mm -hmm. one of the FTA requirements and uh, it'd be for your uh, disabled and they have to go through a certification process and we're also going to have an application uh, that they have to Fill out the first section by the uh, patron, <coughs> and then the second section will have to be filled out by the uh, patron's doctor or physician to uh, ensure that they're certified and able to uh, use our paratransit services. Okay. okay. So again, Madam Chair wasn't here um, earlier when we had this early conversation, so let's re reiterate. So, fixed route meets the needs of all segments associated with our transportation services study, right? Yes. Um, uh, millennials. Uh, our seniors, our veterans, part-time um, workers, one car, no car. And that missed one is like five segments, right? And what we're acknowledging is that perhaps seniors or the disabled, or disabled, seniors or disabled may not use fixed route. They may not can get to it. They may not can get on it. Whatever the case may be. And so you have paratransit where the fixed route will come, the bus will come offline and come get them. How, how does oh, that work? I apologize. That's the flex. The flex. That's flex. Yes. That's the All right, flex. So paratransit is totally separate. separate. Yes. Yeah. Where it would once they are certified and eligible for our paratransit services, it will go directly to their to home, home and pick them up and take them to their destination. Stay with me. So yes. This is. I always think about product <coughs> minimization and, and, and not that it's intended because there's so many different markets. But all right, the fixed route serves <coughs> everybody. But you know, I don't want to get on there. With all them, there's a lot of people out against them. You know, I'm disabled. I'm not comfortable. I'm a senior. It's just too much. All right. Paratransit is not the flex something, but will come off and get you because I can't get there and get back on route. Paratransit is that I truly have a medical condition or something that's d d just yes. I need to have a specialized. So we get to come to you directly, get you, uh, and take you where you got to go. So just like the voucher where I, uh, yeah, I'm just using that as, as, you see what I'm saying? So I call 
I pay two fifty like I pay over here, or is it a different cost? It's a different cost, so it's in a one dollar for the for the paratransit. All right, so that's like our disabled members yes. here or the seniors. Okay, a dollar is it our our minivans? No, so it's going to be the actual same cutaway style bus for the paratransit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's cutaways. Yes, sir. All right, come get you. So we're using the same vehicle. I'm just seeing the, the different equipment we need. So the same equipment that we use for paratransit will be used in fixed route. Yes, but it will be identified as a paratransit. Right now we have no signage for it, but I can put it on the market <coughs> on the bus and the side of the bus that specifically say paratransit. So people would know that the difference from the fixed route bus that's going down, which is also going to have the number route 10, 20, 30, or 40. So paratransit, let's say I've got to go to get my, I've got, I got to go, actually I've got to go get bone density test first time ever. Some type of bone density, I mean, they say it doesn't hurt, it's just an image. So i got to go get that test. Right, so you got to come get me, take me to that. But it's not like on demand, like um, as an Uber or Lyft, where they're going to come get me and you're going to take me by myself. Or sometimes the taxi, they come get me and I can put, there's a couple people that can get in there and it's sort of like a shared ride. I'm trying to get a feel of when they come get me as a paratransit, do I now go to the next person that's close to them? I mean, how do you route that? How does that work? Yes, sir. Or is, that, is it totally dedicated to me? I'm getting on a 15. How does it work? No, so it is the same way that you just said the concept is like a shared route. So if there are other pickups yep. along the route they pick you up along that route, they're going to make those pickups first or in direction to your uh, destination. Okay. So if your destination overlaps, so it's they'll drop you off and continue on picking up, or they will pick up the next person in route toward your destination, your final destination. Mm -hmm. So this has to be coordinated. This but there's a flip side to that as well. What's that? So we don't have to necessarily or only take you to your destination. You can also be taken to the fixed route and then get on the fixed route bus and continue on. So that's a second piece to it. It's a caveat to uh, the paratransit. Will you help me get on? Since you helped me get onto the paratransit, will you help me get onto the fixed route? Seeing that was the whole point, I needed help. Yes, and, that was, and that's part of that driver's responsibility on both sides, paratransit and a fixed route driver. If you are a citizen that has to use the accessible lift, yeah. and that driver will get off that bus and help you get onto the bus using the accessible lift and or coming in through the front passenger door. Mm -hmm. Does this canalize the voucher program that the seniors may use right now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Talk to I wouldn't use that terminology, but Ms. Janet and I was talking about that earlier. They <coughs> may be receptive to take it because it extends their voucher now because it's only one dollar, right. so they can get more rides. Yes, they get more rides. I'm just discounting it. I'm just so it's a benefit. It's a great benefit. So now they're they're you know it goes on. So I can use my voucher over here. My voucher dollar, my voucher dollars can be used now chair over here on this paratransit. To this point, the members are now going with ten to one. But the key thing behind that is they would have to be certified. How do you get me back home? I, I mean, I'm always you know, just get. I say just get me there. I can get home. Now, in this case, how do they get home? They call you to come get them in reverse. How does that work? Yes, they will also call for the return trip. Or if they know in the beginning that they are going to have a second leg, mm -hmm. they can schedule them both at the same time. Oh, yeah. Or if they, you know, once they get there, they, you know. Nine times out of ten, that's what's going to be. They're not going to just go one way and not come back. Right. So this is where I, I think you know, as people get more into this, you think about quality of life. If I'm only going to the doctor and back, right, that's scheduled. We can set the appointment. I know I got to be there at ten thirty to get tomorrow. I've got to leave my committee early so I can go get my doctor's appointments over here at Full Star. Cop, no problem. Right, that's a back and forth. One of the challenges that is. There may be times where I just want to go do something. I've got quality of life. And so the fixed route gives me that, okay, I need to give a top of the hill at 1020. Got to go. I can keep moving. <coughs> the other one has limitations because it, it only buys you a moment up and back. Yes. Right? And, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help the public understand the distinguishing difference about how it's like the fixed route is important because it keeps your mobility. You can always, you can go anywhere you want to within the circle. It, it keeps you moving, whereas this one, you go up and you come back and that's it. You don't get to stop here, stop here, that's stop perfect. here, yes. get off here, pick this up, swing over here. You know, I, I do a quality of life trip. It cost me 50 bucks to go from my house on Riverside. Go here, stop over here, get some wings, stop back over here. 50 bucks. 
to go as far as Max and Road from, from Riverside. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. that, that's expensive for the average person. That takes people tips. So I'm, I'm like, I'm helping people get context, like, now nah, guys, to move. You, you know what I'm saying. I'm, Gary, I'm, 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 I'm applauding um, this offering. I just want to distinguish the difference that this is not the flex route. Um, that I was thinking this is actually a separate system with a separate contract that we have to engage these guys for and I, I haven't seen the economics or anything regarding it. That was all no, flex, a lot. Of no, it's all the same. It's it, part of the contract. Flex and paratransit is all part of the same contract. So no more money? No. Or it's, other than as it expands, I mean as it grows, of course, right, it's part of the right. 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 demand right. response right. piece like you just said, uh, yeah. like your, probably a life trip. Yeah. That's a demand response because it allows you to go from one stop to the next stop to another stop. You get back to your origination. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm thinking. Process. Probably look, I'm processing. Yes, what I'm thinking at this time is probably the flex and then also the, the paratransit yes. and the uh, fixed route bus system. That would probably keep our uh, ridership up. I'm yes. thinking because it's all combined together. So we. That'll cut down on those moments of the bus or buses. Up. Yeah. Is our, that part of your, your plan? Yeah. Is our, your well, plan? Our, our goal is to get as many people as possible on the fixed route. Yeah. Yes, system. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, there are some people because of medical conditions Especially who can, cannot utilize that. And that's that's where the the, the, the paratransit yeah. Yeah. comes in. Yeah. But it's still your move. right. Okay. So saying, but you count her, she's looking for points. All these adds to a point survivorship. They all talk about operationally that we need to segment them because you really can't put those two populations really together, right? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, you you can yes. to some, some yes. degree. Yes. You, you, so you can't because we, we run into a problem with ADA if you don't because they, you want to give them, you know, they are still a part of the society of your city. options. I, yeah. Yes, sir. So, so we want to make sure, and that's why I say it's that second piece of the paratransit where mm -hmm. they can uh, get the paratransit and transfer to the that. fixed route. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's the whole point of even having seniors as a, it, it, it's okay, it's a designated and respective class of citizen. Yes. They get their own voucher program. They get, they, they get certain rights, certain entitlements. So all I'm saying is that I'm okay with the, it's not to diminish or marginalize it, it's just that segment of the population by default gets its own buses. So we don't force them to have to get on Fixed route. We're saying we're giving you an option. Right. Yes, that's so what I'm saying. That's that's a great uh, point. Great and, yeah. and when we have a client to come in to the transportation center, we will counsel them on what's going to work best for them. Mm -hmm. Whether it be the fixed route, the flex, paratransit, yeah. Yeah. or the mm -hmm. voucher program, okay. we'll we'll help them decide what's going to work best for them. Mm -hmm. And and commissioner, the, the the reason the paratransit is rolled into the one contract is because it is a federal requirement when you have a fixed route yep. and you have to offer paratransit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we make sure that it, it, it was all inclusive. But we get credit. Yes, we do. That's all the ridership it has. I mean, it's so different, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. line mm -hmm. items, but it rolls up to overall ridership for our program here. Yes. Right. Good job. All right, guys, we're good. I'm, I'm comfortable on that. Con I'm sure you're okay with concrete. Oh, He's got to keep moving. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Well, the next item is an update on the Lee Road widening project. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been talking about it for at least the last couple of months because we're approaching the point where we will be able to establish a schedule for it actually happening. But we're not quite there. We're almost there. We do have to. Uh, uh, get a the consultant that did the <coughs> plans to update the plans. Uh, they and I've been after them to get it get me a proposal to do that. The yep. one caveat has been there were two components to the funding, actually three. Certainly the county component. There was the uh, uh, missing money or uh, unallocated in limbo fund component. Yep. And then there was the 2028 allocation. Yep. And uh, based, uh, so we've established two of them, the, the local funding <coughs> and the uh -huh. missing uh, funding or, or an allocated funding. The last component uh, is the element of where the 2028 funding is going to land. That's an, a, approximately $4 million uh, component to the overall program. Yep. 
it was either going to be in 2020 and 2021. Well, it makes a big difference to the consultant in terms of the uh, environmental component uh, to the program cannot be any older than six months when we advertise for construction. So they need to know when the funding is going to be there for bidding construction because otherwise they cannot price the, uh, the program appropriately. Now what they have done for us is this much. They have offered to give us a proposal without that element and then we would have to double back and add it as we move forward because otherwise we would be getting into the environmental component twice. We would have to do it twice mm -hmm. because we would get it ready for 2020 and because we need to be ready and then if, if the funding lands in 2021 then we would have to do it again. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the we, um, that we just put a put on that we'll come back to it later as long as that doesn't impact anything along the way. Right? It gets that place. In other words, it's not a forced condition of strength. If you told me that, well, we can just, it's like our grades, so I can just come back to it later at the end of the you know, tour closing. Because um, you need to validate the value of the property 72 hours before. You know, it, it's fine. Um, if I understand you correctly, uh, we can get moving and leave that component uh, for a later decision. Yep. Uh, it's going to cost me more in waiting. It's it's going to it's going to potentially cost more because again they're pricing uh, they're able to give us a price for now mm -hmm. or a price for next year. If they give us the price for next year, then if they get if we need them to do it this year, it'd be less. So we we could handle the, the proposal in that fashion. Yeah, that, I mean, we give you a contract that says, but we don't need you until next year, but you've got a contract that the future. I mean, that's the future, right? We've got a guaranteed price. Why would they, because we pause, they want to increase the price. I mean, that's the whole point of agreeing to the contract today is to lock the, lock the price today. And, and that's that's precisely what, what they're concerned about. <coughs> They need. They want to have a sense of what the requirements are going to be for next for 2021, um, and if we ask them for a price now, they're just going to price the risk in. That's all that's going to happen. But uh, but we can uh, get a proposal from them uh, to under the assumption that it's got is a go in 2020. Mm -hmm. But then if it slides to 2021, then we'll have to, we're going to have to revisit it. So we we'll do that. So do we need to? If, if well, you're talking about the winding, the winding, correct? Which is we pulled the already down this path, and right. So yes, uh, we're still talking about the environmental that we've already taken right away in condemnation. I'm, I'm just curious, like it, it's a federal requirement that I did you. Yeah, I'm that, not uh, criticizing you. I'm just like okay. No. I, you're preaching to the choir because uh, we've already done this uh, and it's probably been done on every single project and it is not unusual <coughs> to have all uh, go through the process and have some of the approval slaps and, and so they have to reopen the environmental and that's precisely what's happened in this case the project didn't go to construction according to the to the original sequencing yep. and some of the studies last so you have to reopen that redo those studies okay, button it up right. update and then be able to certify them okay. thank you so what is your course of recommendation where, where, where? if if you are okay with an administrative uh, concurrence to as soon as i can get that proposal we put it before the board so i don't have to wait on. I'm fine with that. Just bring it to the full board since we're on time. Mm -hmm. I mean, make sure there's no. Okay. Alright. Bring it to the full board. Mm -hmm. Mark, are you okay with yes, that? Sir. I mean, just mm -hmm. administrative, just an administrative action. Bring it to the full yep. board. Let them vote. Sounds good. Okay. Keep it moving. I think. Okay. Like, all right. But I'm going to go back to one more time. I'm sure this is important. Going to a town hall. We had this conversation. It was our my understanding that for the Lee Road resurfacing I'm going to back up for a minute. It's my understanding that the original cost of that we asked at this time last year was about four hundred and 
$50,000 for sacred cows. <coughs> McGill informed us, or really educated us along the way, that, well, it's, you know, cow pastures, we really need to make this better. There's a way to sort of, you know, as opposed to losing the resurfacing through the ultimate widening, there's an approach that we can um, add more depth to it, make it thicker, my words, not yours, mm -hmm. make it thicker mm -hmm. in such a way that uh, there'll be less, um, it'll be more compatible along the ways, yeah. you lose a little bit on the edges, but okay, to get there, there's gonna be a premium, and I remember somewhere around 453, well, <coughs> 43, 53, doesn't matter, 550, for sake of country. Is that accurate? And what, because again, I'm gonna be saying this tomorrow, this is that, when we do this resurfacing, recognizing why, because somebody's going to ask me, why don't y'all do it all at once? Right, why, we already know we're going to answer that question tomorrow. Yes. Why don't we do that? Oops, my bad. Yet yeah, this happened, this BM, okay. But because, again, we're doing something that we're going to tear up 20% on both sides to ultimately widen, right? So you spend spending money that you know in a year or two, you're going to tear up. But in the meantime, you're going to ride smoothly up and down the street and won't be a total throwaway. So I'm looking for a very accurate answer that says, okay, but it is thicker. And this is what I was talking about, Mark. I, I know what you were saying about lips. And, you know, mm -hmm. I just want assurances that it is thicker and better than what's currently there, and it'll, it'll withhold better as people drive along the way until the widening is done. Is that true? It, it, it certainly is thicker than the normal overlay that we do. Okay. And it, the expectation is that it will be durable enough to carry us until we go to construction. Mm -hmm. So it will it will look like a brand new road to, to the naked eye. We, the technicians, will know how it's stratified, composed below, uh, in terms of the different materials, but it will ride like a brand new road. It will be at pretty much the same elevation as it is now. And the advantage to doing it that way was that we then could use the same set of plants, the same design, the same road profile and cross section, and not have to adjust the plants to a different elevation. So we will be doing mm -hmm. both components and salvaging as much of that as we can. Obviously, there are going to be <coughs> turn lanes and there's going to be medians along the road that we're going to have to dig up asphalt for. But uh, uh, short of that, the new uh, pavement is going to match or abut the road on, on both sides, and then the entire <coughs> thing is going to get capped over. Mm -hmm. you okay? mm -hmm. He's going to answer the very question I just asked tomorrow. I'm just going to produce our dry run, right? We're walking mm -hmm. through um, just so we're prepared. So it's not to throw you off, it's just I know I want an answer publicly. Okay. Anything else on Lee Road? widening or resurfacing. That's all I have on that one. So on the agenda tonight, Mark, there is an item to talk about reward and contract? No. No. No, because we do not have the proposal yet. It'll be on the next agenda. Um, May 6. But we have, uh, <coughs> we have a year to be able to get that advertised, and it's going to take probably six to eight months to redo the environment. Great. Well, you'll have, you will have have those talking points tomorrow. Okay. You won't deliver it now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're okay to keep it. Mm -hmm. We just had a question. I Please. Thought, I thought we were going to approve that contract. We're not. You're saying it's not going to come. No. It's, it's not on the agenda. So what did we just talk about in our special call, Chance? Where's those meeting minutes? Didn't we talk about awarding the resurfacing? Contract, yeah. yes, but not the Lee Road, not, not the supplemental. Oh, we're, we're, we're talking about resurfacing. It's yeah. on the agenda tonight. That's what I'm okay. saying. Hey, we both okay. about like this ain't gonna turn out well. Okay, well, no, no, we're not. Not we're change we feel no, no, yeah, I'm it's on the agenda. Yeah. Okay, I'm we, sorry, my bad. Okay, good. This we were talking about two different things. Yep. Uh, we certainly have the contract for the resurfacing okay. on the agenda tonight. Tonight, yes. thank you. And what we do not have is the consultant agreement for the widening project. That's that fine. That's we're not there yet. We're not you ain't finished there. working that out. We will clarify that. But again, we were going back and forth because they're related. And that's why we got to give a segment to two. Yes. But duly noted, tonight we're approving, Mark, yes, we're approving on the agenda, tonight. the contract for the LMIG spots, so whatever y'all going to go yes. do, yes. the research is starting to be low. You know she just said that. I mean, everything she just said, oh, we're undermining everything she just said. Oh, we're starting with Lee Roll. Yeah, we are. Yes, we are. We are. 
Yeah, okay. We're good? And we, we did right. this without your time. I'm pushing. Yes, I know you're working on it. All right. Thank you. Okay, yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. The, the next item on the agenda is a presentation by a representative from Exonet Systems. Yes, come uh, on. Regarding uh, small cell towers and uh, yes, perhaps our uh, director of uh, sure. yes, can you give us uh, an sure introduction into this? And I will. So good. Uh, I guess it's afternoon. It's business along that. So good afternoon, everyone. There's a. I'm Tiffany Stewart, Stanley, the Director of External Affairs. Um, I think you're the only person I don't know. No. Um, so we are fortunate today to have Mr. Eric LaVorn. Correct. Uh, he is the External Relations Director for um, Extinet. Okay. And um, I, so recently, um, there have been some changes regarding um, broadband and trying to do some things in, at the state level and also through the FCC to try to kind of expand 5G. Um, back in September of 2018, the FCC issued an order um, with some things in there to try to encourage relationships between carriers and local governments. Um, and some of them, things are like new shot clocks, um, just things to make sure that everyone's on the same page as you know, what the uh, federal government's trying to do to expand broadband. And then this year, we had um, Senate Bill 66 that is sitting on the governor's desk that also has some things in there that also help to encourage relationships between local governments and carriers to expand 5G throughout our state. So I'm not going to steal Mr. Lavorne's thunder. Um, he's here. He has a great presentation for us. Will so you I'm, explain what 5G is in this presentation? Well, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll let him. <laughs> I will let him do that because I, I, look, I just deal with the. No, no, I'm fine. I mean, but, but that's part of the whole criticism. Yes, right? he, he has that's a great. Another one. Oh, I'll that. A great presentation. I sent another presentation that's more long and detailed that goes into our company and we're a national company and all the indoor and outdoor networks that we have around the country. So if you want to look at that one later, you can. Okay. More information. So this is a clicker, so okay. you just tell me when to click. click okay. Click all right. Great. Well, thank you all for your time this afternoon. I really appreciate it. I previously uh, met with Mr. Valentin. Uh, then I met with Chairwoman Tiffany recently to talk about this. Um, just to touch on briefly what Tiffany was talking about uh, with the FCC orders uh, and the new state law for small cell that's coming into effect. Um, you know, the, they pretty much mirror each other, although the state law goes into much greater detail. Georgia's an FCC regulated state, so you know, all the jurisdictions in Georgia are, are obligated to go by the FCC regulations. So the FCC passed a number of orders over the last year or so in regards to small cell wireless and 5G to promote, you know, uh, getting this built out in the country as quickly as possible. And it, and it outlines things like permitting processes with jurisdictions, shot clocks like she mentioned, uh, sets fee schedule rates and things like that, okay? Now, we can move forward underneath those FCC order regulations right now, but what most states are also doing, uh, in addition to that, even if they're an FCC state, is they're creating their own um, small cell legislation which goes into much more detail um, and then typically once those get passed then we'll you know defer to whatever the rules and regulations are within that and the bill for the state of georgia uh, senate bill 66 has been passed and it's on the governor's desk it should be signed uh, by may 12th and then it'll be effective october 1st but basically all the jurisdictions now that they know what is in the bill are uh, either redoing their small cell ordinances if they have one or realigning their administrative permit processes now to be in line with what that new state law and those regulations are going to be. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. to, to, to that point, you, you said a lot fast, okay. but the, the law has not been signed yet. Right. I don't know what's in the law. But I mean, we haven't we haven't got our, uh, we haven't been briefed yet fully on the full legislation that came since they just finished. So I want to acknowledge for the committee that this is being recorded. So this is more sure. for the record. Okay. Um, the board of commissioners has not formally been debriefed on what happened in this past legislative session, um, and so let's assume this is part of that. Um, all right, you know we know yes you got 45 days for our you know veto or it goes to effect. That's May. So then we have until October. So Mark. From May to October, what I'm hearing that, um, assuming the governor signs this, 
we need to begin to acknowledge both paths. Um, the, the administrative part that he talked about, as well as our, our small business legislative mm -hmm. part, ordinances permitting, is that true? The judges, Miguel? Yes, sir. Okay. That's correct. All right, so we, it, it's setting expectations that now means six months from the time that, you know, five months from then. I'm, I'm just, are we hearing that right? Do you have the bandwidth of the time to commit to this, to get it through the process, Mark? And I know he, this will be our planning and zoning or the permitting process is another director. Mark, are, are you committed to this? Yeah, I don't think we have a choice if we get approved. Same, but right, which with you. I'm checking on ordinances. Okay. Well, the whole idea behind this is to boil it down into as simple a process as possible. You know, typically going through the public works department, boil it down to maybe just a simple right-of-way encroachment permit. Um, where we're submitting drawings and, and getting those permits approved and to build our sites and typically we're working with the utility companies in the area as well our first goal is always to try and co-locate on existing poles if there's no existing pole that we can utilize then we'll set a new pole if we have to um, all right so so stay there just we're just going all right so a couple years ago uh, a firm I can't remember I was Tom Lowe's son he's from Fort Carson, <coughs> came in here and the Board of Commissioners, this is public knowledge, we agreed to an arrangement with a firm that allows them to have, it was like 25% of every cell phone tower and every license, sub license on these poles for like 10 years. And I looked at that arrangement and like, wow, I'm listening to you. And one of the things that we were concerned about is having too many poles becoming the Jetsons, right? So how do we manage our, our landscape regarding this? So I, I'm listening, but I also want to understand the operational impact that when he makes the statement that, oh, we, we just, we could set up our own network that we, like guys, y'all know what he's saying? I, I, Mark, I, I want to make sure that this is managed, that, um, uh, in, in that, um, that in, even in hearing that, uh, is, is there a bid process for those people who are interested in this and because we have a pre-existing relationship with somebody, what does that mean for us? You may want to go talk to Ken regarding that. Because what I'm hearing is like, well, we already got this in place. Why would we just expand what we already got? I don't know the answer to that, but I'm, I'm putting this out there because well, we're talking. Well, what you may be talking about is something to do with cellular towers, you know, which is which is different because those are put on private property and then if a, if a company makes an arrangement with a jurisdiction to <coughs> lease property from that jurisdiction to build cell towers and gives uh, revenue to the county on that that's really a completely separate thing because small cell is operated in the public right-of-way so a company like us extinet we're a neutral host provider utility infrastructure company so we're licensed by the state public service commission on a public convenience and necessity CLEC means competitive local exchange carrier license so we have the right just like the local um, utility companies and phone companies to come in and use the right-of-way to build this infrastructure and, and like I said typically we're using utility poles street light poles traffic poles things like that to build these small cells so a lot of times up here people say refer to them as towers I cringe every time I hear that they're really not towers they're it's basically yeah, missing them. okay so you you mentioned towers and I'm yeah. listening like okay wait a minute now we've got a pre-existing relationship so that, again we're doing this because this is being filmed I think that was a good point of clarification because right. when we hear towers we're thinking okay we're putting up an 800 megahertz communication tower all over the place. And I'm trying to say, well, why can't we piggyback what you're saying? That this it's really a separate issue. And, you know, I've been in this business for 25 years. I started off in the very beginning and doing cell towers all across the country. So, you know, cell towers is just, a, and you probably, and I'm sure Douglas County has a section of their ordinance dedicated to cell towers, okay? But you have not passed. Most, what most jurisdictions are doing now is passing a separate subsection that deals specifically with small cell and DAS or distributed antenna system, basically the same thing, and that's what we're talking about today. You could leverage that existing network, though. Again, as both, I, I get what you're saying. Small tail, small cell towers. My question is a right. simple one: Why couldn't you leverage that? What we're already investing in, we already have. Went through all this process, put it on private property, school property, our property. We got a communication tower. We're putting them all over the place. We're trying to be synergistic. To, you know, the county can use the city use it. Whoever can use it. What, I mean, again, is it being, I appreciate the sovereignty of, of telecommunications and all that represents. We understand what that means. But the point is, okay, is it synchronized? Or is it just, we're just dropping stuff along right away? <coughs> around, I mean, guys, I mean, can there, is there a way to say that, well, a tower is a tower is a tower? Can it be leveraged for 
this same application? I mean, well, cell towers are not going away. They're staying in place. The cell towers that are here now with the equipment that they have on them are yeah. basically supporting the technology we, that we have up to now, which is 4G LTE, Got okay? Yeah. Which, think of that as kind of like the backbone of, of the wireless system that supports, you know, all the calls and text. But right now, what's going on with going into 5G and all the new applications that are going to be coming out with 5G, and I'll, I'll go into that in a minute, um, it, it's a completely different type of technology, a completely different shift. So you can't do 5G on traditional cell towers. So in order to implement 5G, what the industry is shifting to is the small cell or distributed antenna network systems all around the country uh, to bring 5G to everybody. Without having it, you're not going to be able to get 5G. And it's something that everybody in the county is going to be demanding. I mean, the, the carriers are rolling this out over the course of the next two years. And it's supposed to be really almost completely rolled out by the end of 2020. Okay, well, let, me, yeah, let me go through this and I think it'll maybe clear up a lot and answer a lot of questions. So if you want to go to the next page, and since we're limited on time, I'm just going to try to just skip over, just hit some highlights here and go through this and then just answer questions to y'all. Real quick, to that yeah. point, this was last minute, so don't we're not rushing you on time, but okay. we wanted to acknowledge when this came, uh, brought to my attention, I thought it would be a good opportunity for the timing that we had this committee meeting, so we wanted to get forward just in time. So don't think this is your only time, but I just want to acknowledge that. We appreciate uh, well, you. Well, I appreciate up. that very much. Thank uh, you. Okay, keep going. So this page right here just kind of outlines who we are as a, as a company. We've been in business uh, for about 15 years. We're the largest publicly held company in the country that does nothing but small cell and DAS networks. Um, we have, in the other presentation I sent that you can look at on soft copy later, shows we're a national company. We have networks all across the country. Most of our major networks are, are built out in places like New York, San Francisco, Dallas. Those are some of the major uh, cities that we've done, but we have thing we have networks everywhere, and then lots of indoor networks as well. A lot of the you know famous you know well-known stadiums and buildings around the country, like the Empire State Building in New York, uh, AT&T Dallas Cowboy Stadium in Dallas. Those are all our uh, facilities. We have a lot more that that we have built out for indoor as well. Um, and this just like I was mentioning a minute ago, this this outlines what our licensing is uh, with the state and our ability to operate and build networks in the public right of way. And this is just um, the southeast is the one area of the country where our where our company has kind of lagged behind the rest of the country in building networks. So we're really just getting our momentum going in the southeast over the last couple of years. But this talks about the networks that we have in some of the, in the states around here in the southeast. And this is talking about our current project which is now up to about 145 nodes and covers all these jurisdictions uh, here in Metro Atlanta. Uh, we also have, like I said, we have agreements with GDOT uh, for small cell. We have a couple of different agreements for them to use their right of way and also to use their infrastructure within the right of way. And we always enter into agreements with all the local utility companies as well, what we typically call pole attachment agreements. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to go to the next page, Tiffany. This is just kind of a, a simplistic, uh, rendition to show you kind of how small cell works, you know, and it's not going to be every pole span like is shown here, but typically what you have is radio equipment that's hung on the pole, typically in a cabinet or a shroud. You have an antenna on the top of the pole, and this is really like a standard utility pole, and then you have fiber that interconnects all these sites, okay? And eventually that, and don't think of it as a ring, it's not a ring, it's more like a tree, okay? But the fiber does go back to what would be called a hub site. And here they're showing this building is the hub site. Typically, a hub site is actually going to be a cell tower. And that's how the signal gets routed back to the network for the carrier. And what we are in Extinet Systems, we're a neutral host provider. So we come in and we build the network and the infrastructure, and we own that. The carriers themselves, AT&T Wireless, is who we're building this one for. But we do work for all the major wireless carriers. And we have Verizon and T-Mobile and Sprint. They're all our customers, so they come back and they lease space on these networks from us, okay? If you want to go to the next page. And you asked about 5G? Yeah. Here, this is kind of a, a, a whole breakdown of talking about um, 5G. I mean, basically, what's going on is, you know, uh, you know, I'm 50 years old. The only thing I do on my phone typically is text and make phone calls. You know, occasionally mm -hmm. look up something on Google or use Google Maps. I don't do a whole lot myself. But if you have kids, you know, they're all on there and they're doing everything under the sun on those phones. You know, YouTube, movies, all these things. 
And there's a whole lot of things that are coming out now with 5G. So if this is not about coverage. I, we've got to kind of break that old mindset like, oh, you're doing this to get more coverage. Well, we already have coverage everywhere. We don't need more coverage. Well, it's not about coverage. It's about capacity. It's about the capacity on the network to handle all this data and video traffic that's now flowing through the system. And it's going to just be more and more and more with all the apps that are going to become available on the phones through 5G. You're going to be able to do so many different things and like on this point here, we're talking about some of the new innovations. I don't know if you all have heard about smart city applications, but like I'm building networks in Greenville, South Carolina, and Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and Pigeon Forge, Tennessee right now. They're all very interested in, in implementing the smart city applications that you can do for traffic control and everything's on these networks. So we're partnering with them on things like that. Uh, but new innovations in the field of healthcare, ed education, aviation, logistics, robo robotics, artificial intelligence, and yes, the one everybody's seen a lot of stories in the national press about is the driverless cars. So, you know, once this 5G gets implemented, that system is going to run a lot of these autonomous driving vehicles uh, to go around. And the other major thing is, too, like right now at your house, the only choice you have to get internet at home is either through the cable company, you know, or maybe AT&T that's got fiber running to your house so it's a hard landline connection. Well, once 5G and these wireless networks get built out, these wireless providers are going to be able to offer internet service at your home, too. So you're going to have a, com a competitive offering there, you know, to hopefully bring down the prices, too, to get internet wirelessly at your home as opposed to, you know, a hardwired connection. You can go on to the next one. But real quick, to, sure. to, to your point, wireless, you know, there's always, you know, as the advocates for the average citizen, I think of security, I think of the difference between, you know, I like old school landlines, I'm, I'm, you know, my mother's an old federale, I you know, you need a landline, get a subpoena to get my phone, whereas wireless is you just snatch stuff. Let's keep it simple, kids are very smart, things are out there, so one of the things I would be concerned about this is, is you know, it's not your issue, it's more of a, the industry and how they're dealing with security uh, and, and right. keeping it encrypted. Um, see, it, I mean, again, you've got an entire network of this is public safety communication. Now we've got the T-Mobile and all the guys going along the railroad tracks putting up the for our cell phone. Now we've got this totally different network that's coming. It's like, so 5G, 7G, and you got stuff that says, I can't use the less generation, I got to put a brand new network and I'm, 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 I'm a futurist. I'm, I'm, like, I'm extending this out. I'm like, guys, it, it, it's like we're going to have all this stuff all over the place. In the spirit of communication, I'm, I'm just, and I, I'm not, it's not a criticism, but it's things that we have to ask the question to understand and say, what does that mean for us? And, and so, whereas, um, how many how many towers do we have for the telecommunications? Just real quick, guys. Come on, for the radio system? For radio. Nine. Nine. Nah, all right. And how many cell phone towers do we have for just our normal capacity? I know roughly 20, let's say 20, for the sake of the conversation, throughout the whole county, 199 square miles. So how many of these little small towers, I mean, what I'm listening to you say is, you're gonna put up this small tower, small cell towers. You're gonna connect them all over the place. What does that mean for um, our community and what it looks like, what it feels like? Um, think about how we have to uh, convert um, the current cell phone towers to make them look like trees because they have to be 150 feet above the, the, the tree line. It sounds like this is going to be more blended, but it's under, I mean, I get it, but I want to understand its impact. Well, we're very concerned about aesthetics, as we know the jurisdictions are, and I'm yeah. going to show you some photo simulations in just a minute, but the whole idea with the industry is to keep getting the equipment smaller and smaller all the time to reduce the profile and to use different methods to stealth it, which is instead of just having the radios exposed on the pole, put them in uh, shrouds or cabinets and you know paint the antennas, things like that. It's really not going to look any different than anything else you see out there on the poles right now. In the past, when they first started building these things, the equipment was very large and bulky. And when you'd have multiple carriers on one pole, it would look pretty bad. But over the last year or two, they've really managed to get the size of the radios down. And with the 5G equipment, the radios are even smaller. Wasn't broadband built to, to, to meet the needs of the rural? Mm -hmm. All right, so put me back where I'm at. I, I get it. I'm suburban, you know, exurban, whatever you want to call it. 
If I think about Georgia, I think about South Georgia, and we'll see them in a couple weeks when we go to Savannah, my peers, I'm going to be asking them questions about broadband and just seeing what they're hearing versus what we're hearing up here in the metro area. The whole premise behind broadband was rural. Is that not correct? Or was it, I mean, recognizing we have to meet their needs being by default, metro gets their needs met, but what, I mean, what do you, where is the investment coming in to do this? Well, I think what you're referring to is starting with President Obama, there was these initiatives from the federal level to bring broadband out to rural areas, and those are still going on. Those are still being pushed. That's really, it, it ties into this because eventually with 5G and these wireless networks, they will be able to offer internet services. So eventually this will get out to those rural areas too. But to be honest, you know, to start with, when building out 5G for the country, they're going to focus on the major cities and the downtown areas first. Mm -hmm. before, but eventually, it will get there. But you, now, you see, I'm asking the right question, which is like, yeah, but you, you, the bills that's being passed was all about rural. It was it's a political overlay. Well, that was, it's really two different things. Those were bills that were being passed about that, and then now the bills that are being passed and the FCC regulations that are being passed are about promoting 5G. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the country is really uh, anxious to get 5G built out across the country as quickly as possible. And they're also, you know, in mind of keeping competitive with other countries, too. We want to be the first country to get this built out nationwide as well. And really, 5G is a completely different animal than anything before. All the upgrades before, when you went from 2G to 3G to 4G, those were all just kind of upgrades on the basic system, okay? With 5G now, you're talking about a completely different big shift, paradigm shift in what's going to be offered as services from these carriers based on this new technology. So it's, that's why you're having all these laws being passed now, because it has to be done through a different type of infrastructure uh, and network, which is what I'm here talking about, as opposed to just being another equipment upgrade on the cell tower. Again, yeah, Microsoft operating system bring it to XP or something. It's totally brand new. Yeah, we can keep going. So um, talking about just what we're proposing here in Douglas County, a lot of times when I'm going into jurisdictions, I'm going in and telling them we need to build 100 nodes, 200 nodes, you know, now as part of this project for your jurisdiction. That's a lot to absorb at one time. The good thing about this with y'all is in, since you don't have a small cell code in place right now, we're only talking about 12, building 12 nodes in the northern part of Douglas County, and I'll show you where those are in a minute right now. So to me, it's a good small sampling size for y'all to work with us and get this done and go through the process and see how it goes. And then, you know, by the time we get through with that, you know, if we do get more nodes assigned for Douglas County, you'll have a track record with it and you'll be able to tell us, hey, this worked, this worked, this didn't work, this didn't work, we'd like you to, you know, we'd like to make these changes accordingly. So, to me, it's a good small sample size. And I'll show you where these are at, but this breaks down the types of poles uh, that we're talking about using here. The fiber is not going to be done by us. At, uh, typically, on most projects, we build the fiber as well. But in this case for Metro Atlanta, since AT&T has so much of their own fiber here, they're going to build the fiber part of it themselves. We're just building and owning the, the network nodes. And instead of calling them small cell towers, we call them nodes. That's the word we use is nodes to refer to them. Um, so in the future, though, if being a, a neutral host provider, once we get this built, if Verizon or T-Mobile or Sprint comes to us and says, hey, we'd like to be in the same area on the same network, well, we can work because we're a neutral host license provider. We can work to put them on that same network. We'll try to utilize as much of the existing infrastructure as we possibly can. It may, you know, require adding some additional nodes or, as well. But typically, with the other carriers, Verizon does do some of their own fiber. But it, most of the time, with the other carriers, they're going to have us build the fiber as well for them. Okay. Um, and we are under contract with AT&T, and we're trying to get this uh, built in this area by July of this year. If you want to go to the next slide. Now, this is a map that you're getting something built in July before the law is in effect. What, say that again? Well, there's two different things. You know, we talked about the FCC orders that are in effect right now. So based on the FCC orders, we have the ability to move forward now. Okay. Uh, and, but we don't want to just come in and just ram something down your throat. This is why I'm here. I mean, we want to talk to you guys and work out a process with you guys. Now, that state law is pretty much going to mimic a lot of what's in the FCC orders. It'll just go into more detail. Okay, that, yeah. to that point, but we're, we're, we get the FCC, and this is where I, I'm, I want to make sure I take away, but we're governed by also state, right? We're a subdivision right. of our state, right? So right. at the end of the day, there is a separation between powers, federal and state. We get it, but I'm not going to get it. We, we can't get ahead of, we, uh, you're down a path, it's like, okay, well, 
If you're going to do that, that has not been, if you're going to follow federal, independent of us even learning what, what our local, what our state is telling us, it, um, and I'm, I'm listening to the, the language. Right. I'm, I'm listening to your narrative. Say, okay, so yeah, you may want to slow that down just a little because I'm like, we, we're trying to get up to speed. We're appreciating what you're saying. Like, well, I get it. I get it. But it's it's the speed in which you're trying to move. It's like, had you not walked in my office, we wouldn't have no clue about this. So, mm -hmm. slow down just a little bit on the speed in which when you're saying dates up by July, we're going to be up. It's like, hold on, it ain't even in effect yet. The governor hadn't sent it. But if you're operating on federal, okay, then why are you talking to us? But I guess there is a local. Our, our voice matters. It does matter, and we want to be a partner with okay. you all. I mean, when I met with Miguel, he told me about you know the bad experience you guys had a few years ago with right. mo mobility yeah. coming in, and that company left a black mark on our entire industry. So you, the way get it. The, the, you, you get what you're hearing from us, right? Yeah, I don't know exactly. Listen, I've been doing this a long time, and that's why I'm here to talk to y'all and go through. I just want to be very transparent with you all and let you know, you know, completely what the situation is, what reality is. You know, the industry, our customer, AT&T Wireless, is driving us, you know, to get this built as soon as possible because they have goals and deadlines, you know, for building this out. So, you know, if the law is on their side, they're going to tell us to follow that law, okay? But at the same time, we don't want to come in here and step on your toes. You know, we want to be partners with you all and, and talk about getting a process established that's easy and simple and works for both of us and that you all know exactly what's going to happen and what's going to go on. And I assure you that whatever we do will be in line with whatever the state law is going to be, you know, lined up as, you know, when it gets into effect in October. Well, I'm going to make sure when we start delegation tonight, I'm going to ask them this question. I'm going to ask them offline when we have our update. Because right. that, it's important for us to, you know, again, we, we did take a whole book at the federal and the local level. Right. All right. Well, I know a lot of times in jurisdictions when you haven't heard of this before, or maybe you've heard of it, but you really don't know much about it, this comes in and, and takes you by surprise. Right. You know, I don't believe okay. me, I deal with that all the time. Right. Um, but it's not like that this was just started the other day, you know, and just was rushed through or whatever. This has been going on now. You know, we've been building small cell out in the country now for many, many years. And, it's southeast is kind of in the area where it's kind of lagged behind the rest of the country, <coughs> and, and the southeast is now getting caught up to the rest of the country. Which is to your point. So one more time, it's effective October, whatever you said. You still have transition periods. All jurisdictions right. are allowed. It's not on October first we got It doesn't work that way. Yeah, right. it, for the state law. Yeah, and so my right. understanding is that Governor Kemp has to sign the bill by May the twelfth, and uh, I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure he will sign the bill. <laughs> Uh, based on who promoted it and uh, everything that's in it. They tried last year to get a bill done and couldn't get it done. This year they got it done and approved. I'm sure it will be signed. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be effective October 1st. Uh, Tiffany's probably looking into it and, and I can give you guys more detailed analysis. I have someone in my company who's going to be doing an analysis on the state bill and I can give you all that breakdown and share it with you when he provides it to me, which should be any day now. I've read through it. I, I understand a lot of it. It's very similar to the bills that have been passed in Florida and North Carolina and Tennessee so far. They've all passed their bills like a year ago. Yeah, and then I, I, again, I, I don't want my comments to be skipped over or marginalized, which is right. there is a transition period from the time this effective October 1st for us to get our act together. It doesn't matter because the law is effective, right? It's effective October 1st. At that moment, we know that, okay, this is our ready state. We got to go and comply with whatever Governor Kemp just authorized. Mm -hmm. From there, whether it's one year, two years to get ready, like everything else from digital analog, everything else, you're giving a transition period of readiness. It could be a month, it could be a year. And what I'm, I'm hearing this urgency, like I'm, I'm hearing the press when you're like, well, no, do we know this, but I need, we need to know what this is. Mm -hmm. And so I, I guess we got to get to some other stuff where we're going along here right now. Um, uh, how much more you've got on your presentation? Well, let's let's go through some more here. So, um, these this is a map that shows the locations of the twelve proposed nodes. Uh, just ignore the colors; they don't really mean anything. Uh, but they're they're kind of grouped into little uh, clusters. You know, you have one cluster here, <coughs> a cluster of six here, and then another three down here. And like I said, these are all in unincorporated Douglas County. We don't have anything in the city of Douglasville yet. Um, if you want to go to the next page, so. Because I didn't have any time to do any photo simulations for the uh, polls actually here that we're talking about, we're working with City of Austell right now too, which is very close to you, so I thought I would include some photo sims that we did for them. 
because it's the exact same equipment that's going on the pole for here as there, so it'll look exactly the same if you want to go to the next. But I did three different photo sims. So here's an example of an existing utility pole right there, and this is done by a photo simulation person. What you're basically going to have is an antenna on the top of the pole, or it could be on a standoff arm near the top, uh, but it's a canister style antenna, so it's a 360 degrees rotational antenna. Yep. These can be painted to match the pole. They can be put in a shroud, okay? And then you have a box down here, and for this particular bill, we are on, for 5G, we are only going for very small, low-powered radios. So the size of the equipment cabinet is actually very small. This cabinet is really only about approximately two foot by one foot by one foot. So you have a cabinet that gets attached to the pole here, and then you're going to have a meter and a disconnect switch that will also be on the pole. So it's really not going to look like anything much different than what you see out there for other utilities and things. And uh, you know what we're trying to, to tell jurisdictions is, and I know you're not used to it, but the thing about it is, you know, 90% of people don't have landlines anymore. They all use cell phones. Okay. Well, let, the public right of way was always used for landline phone service and utility before. Okay. So the whole idea behind small cells is that the public right of way should be utilized for small cells since everybody uses wireless phones now, uh, and it helps to promote the the 5G as well because of the technology it has to be the antennas have to be down lower they have to be closer together and they have to be closer to the end user with the handset in order for 5g technology to be effective you can't like i said you can't just upgrade cell towers anymore that might be a mile or two miles away it's not going to work for 5g that's why we're building these types of networks um, if you want to go to the next two these are, these are basically the same thing just a couple more examples you know an existing utility pole Mm -hmm. Equipment, disconnect switch, I think you showed the meter on the back side of this one, um, and then an antenna on top, if you want to go to the next one. And this one, a street light pole, um, again, antenna, cabinet, disconnect, meter would be on the other side. Uh, but with any type of new poles that we're proposing putting in, we can put street lights on those poles as well. So I know a lot of jurisdictions have expressed to me, we love more street lights. The more lighting you can give us, the better. So wherever we're proposing a new extant on pole, we can hang a street light from that. Uh, like for Austell, there's a few that are along um, Powder Springs Road there that we're planning on putting in. And that's what we're, we're going to actually, we have an agreement with Georgia, Georgia Power has a separate uh, division called Georgia Power Street Lighting. And we have, a, we have a working agreement with them, and we're going to work with them to put in streetlight poles along that area, as opposed to just putting in wood utility poles. If you want to go to the next slide. Now these, I went ahead and I took pictures of all the 12 locations that are right now that are proposed for Douglas County. And I've made notes up here as to where they're at. I didn't put exact street addresses, you know, but, but okay. explain where these are located. So your first three are located on Mount Vernon Road, north of Skyview Drive. Here's the first two. And these would both be situations where we would have to install a new pole uh, in these areas right here in the right of way. Okay. If you want to go to the next one. Um, now, and I was hoping you guys could answer this for me here today. We are targeting a number of uh, traffic support poles, either, either concrete or metal. I'm not sure if these are owned by Douglas County or if they're owned by GDOT. If they're on a state route, they're on what's the, the, uh, what's the street okay. that I can't see? What's the street that Well, this particular one is also, it's at the corner Mount of Vernon. Mount Vernon and Skyview. Okay. Sure. So would that be a Douglas County one? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have, it, since you all don't have a small cell ordinance, one option that we have to do that I do with a lot of jurisdictions, we just signed the same agreement with City of Smyrna and with City of Stockbridge in the last few months. Um, but we have a basic boiler template agreement for right-of-way use and use of uh, municipally owned infrastructure, which would include things like these poles, okay? It's a very fair two-sided agreement. You know, I typically work with city or county attorneys on those to incorporate any things that they want to see in those agreements. We're very flexible on it, you know, but basically what it does is it just sets a framework and gives protections for both sides and establishes the permitting process. And it also establishes a lot of things that the jurisdiction wants to see, like insurance and bonds and things like that. <coughs> so that's one option that we could do now uh, in order to be able to move forward is do one of those agreements. And then that would also allow us to use your infrastructure. Now, for whatever reason, you know, you didn't want us to attach to one of these poles. And typically, we would replace them with a taller one. Mm -hmm. 
and then put it, and either hang the equipment from it or put a ground cabinet beside it, whichever you all would prefer. Um, but if for whatever reason, if you didn't want us to use this pole, we could always set another pole beside it. You know, it, I, I don't really like doing multiple poles in one location. It's better. We use these types of poles all the time, traffic poles. So it, it's not a big deal to use those. Um, this one, again, another wood utility pole. If you want to go to the next one, Tiffany. Uh, another wood utility pole. This one happens to be owned by AT&T. We have a master agreement with AT&T as well to use all of their infrastructure that's in the right of way. Uh, another wood, oh wait, that's not the same picture? Yeah, I think you, you touched it. Touch yeah. Oh, did I touch the screen? And went, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know I did that. <laughs> Skip ahead. Okay. Yeah. Well, there we go, okay, now we're ahead. And again, up at the top, it tells you where these are located up and then it'll match up to that map that was in there too. Uh, another traffic pole we're looking at here. Uh, this one, either we may be able to use that pole if the power company will let us, um, depending on the, uh, the primary power at the top. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. The alternative here would be to set a new pole next to that one. And if you want to go to the last, I think. And then again, same type of situation with this pole, we would try to co-locate on this one too. Now one thing here in this area too, in this particular northern corner of Douglas County, you have three different utilities that are overlapping service areas here. It's one of the most confusing things I've run into so far. You have Georgia Power, you have Greystone Grace Power, Power, and you have Cobb EMC mm -hmm. in some areas. Yeah. I right now have the consultant that works for Greystone and we're in the middle of uh, entering into a basic pole attachment mm -hmm. agreement with them as well as a master uh, agreement with the Georgia EMC Association for all the EMCs in the state for a, what, what we're calling a wireless addendum. So wherever we have our base pole attachment agreements with any EMC in Georgia, we'll use this wireless addendum to attach to that main agreement, which will allow us to do the small cell work and all those. So those have been in process for a while and they're almost completed. All right, so real quick, this is more practical. Yes. So we talked about street lights and we, we'll keep this for our sake. Right. All right, so um, 700, uh, seven miles was the Riverside, seven and a half miles was the Riverside Parkway that dead ends into Thorne, for the sake of conversation. There's probably about a thousand tributaries. Let's just say it's 3,000 residents, uh, three to 5,000 residents along that whole quarter. For the sake of conversation, notwithstanding the commercial buildings that are at the end, I'm trying to get a feel for what are you saying for every street light there's going to be a mini tower a mini cell phone in those like it's like a branch that has a bunch of little mini guys along the way i'm, I'm trying to get my mind around how do you service i mean i know with one cell phone tower how much it services right now i'm trying to get my mind where do these little things need to be and so if, it, if one cell phone tower does five thousand people your little mini, you you're going to need what 50 to do in your node to, to satisfy the same amount. I mean, I'm trying to get my mind around. Well, there's there's, there's no generic way to say like a I cell know, tower or a node serves this number of people or this radius or whatever. It's, it's, it's always right. different. It depends on the equipment. It depends on the amount of power That's being it. used. It depends on a lot of factors. Okay. So we have RF engineers at Exponet Systems that work very closely with the RF engineers at the wireless carriers. So the wireless carriers are the ones who design these networks and they come to us and they give us a map and they say, you know, here's where we need nodes for this system in these locations, okay? Yep. Then we go out and we try to find poles or locations for poles that'll work for that, okay? Mm -hmm. And then our RF engineer continues to work with them. Now, right now, with just this being kind of like the cusp of 5G coming out, the, the carriers are really only focusing on areas where they feel they really need to get something in there. And mostly, it most of the time, it's going to be downtown areas with a lot of heavy pedestrian it's traffic, like areas where there's bars and restaurants and things in downtown area. This area we're talking about here, to be honest with you, I'm a little surprised that they're already targeting this area and wanting to come out. But there must be a reason for it because there are RF engineers do analysis all the time to determine this is where we really need these sites to be you know, in order to build this network out for 5G. And if you look at my total project, I'm covering most of Metro Atlanta. I only have 150 nodes for that whole area that they're giving me right now. And I'm sure as time goes on, they're gonna add more, you know, but they're just targeting right now the areas where they feel like they really need it right now to get started. And it'll grow over time. So that I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, that means, <laughs> no, so again, so that means that what I'm hearing is that out west, one more time, 
the West is not going to be served by this because it sounds like your capacity and what your, your strategy is doing is the East. Back to broadband, back to the rule that they're not, their needs are not, I mean, it's not that of yours, it's just our narrative locally as we go down this path that you're setting expectations. Do I appreciate the fast track and the federal and all that? Like, now you know you're not, your needs not going to get that out West. So there, there is a, a voice that says, well, what about us? Yes, right. we're passing this, we're making these ordinances work, but part, it, it doesn't fit the whole county. That's what I've been listening for. I'm listening for this, and I'm, I mean, to your very point, that's the most dense area. I mean, I know well, that where it's driven by business models, you know, I mean, so it's not to say that they're not going to eventually get out to those other areas you're talking about. They don't come into a place like Douglas County and say, okay, let's analyze the whole county and let's um, design and build nodes for everywhere in the county at one time. It doesn't happen like that. They go to the areas where they have the most need first, they build those, and then once those are in, another thing they do too is they analyze the network all the time. So once those first ones get built, they analyze the performance of those nodes and they see how well it's working. They might have made a mistake somewhere and said, well, we really, put, we put one over here, but we really needed it over here. So then they keep adjusting. All right, so let me put it this way. So uh, while I, I can appreciate lobbyists down at the state to get certain things done, uh, Madam Chair, this really has, it's more of an administrative function. This is a permitting process function because I'm sitting here like, okay, well, you don't really need me. I mean, I, I mean, okay, if that, I mean, because it is, this is about business. This is about a commercial application that says, okay, we're going to make money, we're going to serve this group of people, it's going to be right here. We're like, oh, okay, well, y'all already figured out who you're going to serve. I don't have to advocate one way or another. Just make sure the process lines up. You can let these guys do what they got to do. But it had, I mean, I'm, I was listening for how I get involved. It's like, well, y'all just do it. I mean, this is administration. Unless they want to bring in an agreement prior to October 1st, is what I'm hearing. If they want to do that, yeah, I mean, yes, we have to go to the yeah, board. Yeah, but um, and we're, we're researching ordinances right now. Yeah. I mean, this is a business model that I don't have to get excited about. It's like, oh, okay. Well, I, I, again, I hear you. But if, if you're wanting me to take a, a, a legislative approach at the local level, that I have to give voice. I'm Congress, I'm the General Assembly at the local level. And I'm like, and now the chair has to look at the whole county. And you're coming in here, you're advancing for your, for your client, your boss, whoever. And you're about to roll this network out. And it's only on the east side and only in this area. And you're doing this in Douglas County. I'm giving you a voice. You, I hear you. You're, I'm appreciating you now. You're going to appreciate what that means for the five people that would approve this. You're going to have a voice that says, okay, and what about over here? Right. Just telling the story, like, well, don't worry about it. We'll get to that. Effort. Like, okay, you, you, what you, you learn that you, you, you can't marginalize or censor a voice. If we're talking about rights, especially federal rights and right away and sovereignty, well, definitely Douglas County <coughs> understands their voice. And I, I just want you to, as you, as, you, should you, as you work with staff and you come back around, the narrative has to be one in which you, it, 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 again, if you don't need us, you don't need it. If it's administrative, then we keep moving. But if you, you're looking for the board to support something and without going through the whole lawsuit, like, okay, well, T-Mobile, well, we've been through that. We understand what that means. We don't fear that. We, we get what we Okay, you finish get it. You got to spend that money to go do this. Mm -hmm. No problem. We, we, we're not South Georgia. We get it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that. Wow, guys. So Y'all just, yeah. Y'all know what I got to deal with, like, Sir, I don't yeah. disagree with you at all. I don't. Hold on, hold on. But guys, what we're saying is the West doesn't get served. That matters to me. It's like, well, why can't y'all be more accelerated? They don't come here with all this process and all this lobby and all this stuff. Y'all got all this money to make make the law move, but yet you ain't meeting the whole need of the whole area. I, it's not your issue, but it's like, okay, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not overwhelmed. I'm underwhelmed, which is like, well, Dad, I thought y'all had thought through this. It's supposed to be simpler. You ain't got to do all this. All we got to do is use the right ways and the poles you already got. Well, why don't you roll it all the way out? <coughs> why don't you meet the whole needs of the whole a whole area versus a strategic placement? It's like, wow. Them same people, them same cell phone users that are out there in those areas that's making up your whole coverage or whatever you want to call it, they're the same ones that would benefit from that. Right. Why are we doing less than, I mean, I mean I'm saying you're introducing new, you're talking about pre-existing networks. I'm, li I'm listening to your own logic that says, well, what's the problem? You're going to lay on top of street lights and everything that's already there. Okay, we may spot you a couple of lights. No big deal. I mean, I'm all in for that. But I'm sitting here listening to you like, well, why can't everybody have 5G at the same time versus that? Well, we just going to focus here on the east side right here. 
it, it's really a matter of budget for the carriers. I mean, we, we struggle with them with budget all the time. You know, we, we, we would love it if they would come to us and say, hey, we're going to build out a thousand nodes in Douglas County right now to cover the whole county. We would love that. It'd be more business and work for us. But unfortunately, I mean, it's, it is a business. I mean, so just like with Walmart, if Walmart comes into your county and says, we're going to build a Walmart right here in the densest area, and you say, then well, we'd really like you to build one over in this part of the county, too, because people can really use it. And they say, well, there's just not enough business there right now to justify it for us, okay? Well, it, you know, again, it's a difference between public and, and private to some degree. But the point is, you know, it's like they only have so much budget to build so much per year. So, you know, they're going to target the highest need areas first, build those, and then go from there. Each year they'll have a budget, and hopefully as 5G becomes more prominent, and people are, are paying more for that service possibly, or using that service more, then it'll uh, push them to build more and more 5G nodes, small cell nodes everywhere to cover yeah. everybody with that. Eventually yeah. everyone will get it. Yeah, okay, and I, and I think yeah. to, to a certain extent, again, I, I think we, we afforded you on a very fast track to sort of get before us. Uh, we use this committee <coughs> as being a, a, a platform. I think now this is a planning zoning. This is a per this is administrative, right? I'm like, it's not much I can do with this in transportation other than to acknowledge it. But I, I think because um, you had already talked to the Madam Chair and our external directors, I mean, this is the group ultimately you get right. to. But I, I think that at this point, it's like, I mean, think about that. I'm advocating for the West, right? You know, you can imagine that, like, but at least it's thoughtful, right? Which is like, but still. Um, and but, so I had to ask these tough questions to even get my mind around what, what's being asked. I think I'm good for right now. I mean, I, I don't, we've got some other things we've got to get to our agenda. So Miguel, is there, Mark, is there anything else we need to hear other than you are, Mark just told me that they're already working on it. Is that right, Mark? Yes, all are looking at this. Uh, to anticipate, Tiffany, I know you're going to debrief the full board of commissioners. Is that accurate? Yes, and I, I provided some, some basic information to the committee members by email. I know you may not have had an opportunity to look at it. Uh, and like I said, we can go more in depth with the bill um, and just kind of talk about it. Um, I will say, um, you know, they're, they're, it is very similar to the FCC order, that, that the main order that I read. Uh, and so we can just look at everything and then get with you guys with anything that you need as far as what the legislation says. And if you need to refer it to legal, we can do that as well. Okay, so then real quick, Miguel, you work with, I mean, I understand the permitting process to let these guys, so we'll, we'll line it up. When you talk about right away and all of that, how does that impact your world? I mean, what do you have to do to well, we, help Well, we would be the ones that issue the, the right of way permits to, to install the gear. Uh, the, the local ordinance right now doesn't address this uh, proposal. At this point, you've got to have a subparagraph. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so we have to go through uh, a review of the regulations, a review of the law, uh, assuming that that is signed as is now. We have to, we don't have a moving target, and then develop a, a local ordinance to deal with that. And can, that can I tell you one thing? We're working with Henry County right now. So Henry County's been working on a small cell ordinance for a while. They were going to have this massive small cell ordinance. When they discovered this, the state law was about to be passed, they have now changed that to one page. It basically has a, just about a few sentences. I can forward that to you to look at. Would basically, you like, it just we like Henry County. Yeah, but basically, <laughs> it just says we like that the companies like us who are coming in to build small cell, you will comply with the federal and the state law, okay. right. and that's it. That's all the ordinance is now because they figured, what, what is the point for us writing this lengthy small cell ordinance? When it really is governed by the state law and by the federal law, we can just refer to that and say you have to abide by that, and, and that's good enough. I'll send that to yes, you. So you which is my point, which that. is why staff, why y'all get involved. Me, yeah. you're answering the long way to get to that point, right. which is there. Can you help? Yes, I'll, I'll get with it. Yeah, but I, I would, I would add to that 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 there are uh, some unique cases. Case, yeah, there are case by case situations where. <clears throat> What they would propose uh, is not, in, in our view, uh, the best idea. Right. And, and the law uh, at the federal level and the state level does make provision for a back and forth. About it does. It. So there's a baseline that you provide. There, there is there is a, be a baseline, but our, our local legislation need not be uh, just a, a straight referral to. Uh, I it, it can be uh, a little more. Uh, I understand well, one of the ways the state law I'll goes in more do that, detail is the state law sets standards for denials by jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to deny a right-of-way permit for whatever concern and legitimate, and I'm sure there's lots of legitimate concerns, 
they outline these are the reasons that you can possibly deny, okay? And you have to justify these <coughs> in a denial. That's part of what's in the state law. But I certainly encourage you guys to pass a small cell ordinance, you know, as detailed as you want it to be. You know, as long as it's in line with the federal and, and state regulations, that would be a smart thing to do. But we don't need that right now in order to move forward. I think it's in the best interest of the county, you know, to get this technology out there as soon as possible. And like I said, this is a small sampling size, really just 12 nodes, and they're not in areas that I don't think, that I think are gonna be controversial to anybody. The equipment is very small. It's not gonna propose, uh, create an aesthetic concern for anybody, I don't think. So if we can find a way to work through an administrative permitting process with you guys and how to do these, mm -hmm. and we could do that just as a, just as a straight, like you're using your straightforward right away permitting process as it stands right now, or we could enter into this other template agreement, and I'll forward that to you all uh, as a way to set some uh, some further guidelines. You know, and again, a lot of protections there for both sides, insurance, bonding, all that stuff, uh, and I can work with your attorney on that too. You know, because that'll give you guys a little more. So there's a couple of different ways to go about it, you know, but I'm trying to be open and transparent with you guys that our client, AT&T, is going to be pushing me hard, you know, to get these sites, you know, built. And if the county comes to me and says, well, we're just not going to work with you right now. We're going to make you wait six months or till October or whatever, then I think the answer from AT&T is probably going to be, you need to go by the FCC orders now and submit drawings and applications and start the shot clock. That's what they're gonna tell me to do. So when I have to go by their direction. Uh, right, right, but, but again, yeah. in the meantime, I understand who, who's paying your bills. And yeah. So likewise, like we had T-Mobile and at and now you gotta come talk to us. Right. Right, no, it's like you can't send messengers in to sort of like tell us what we gotta do. There's, a, there's, a, there, there's an honor, uh, I hear you, but it's like, okay, we got you guys, but it, it's how it's coming across. Right. Right? It's like, no. I mean, it, I think we're willing, what you're hearing out of us, like, no, we get that, get, but I keep feeling this overlay, like, okay, like, no. I, I, I just think that how it's being delivered, like, so we'll just leave it at that. We're going to close this up. Right now, I'm, 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 I'm going to make a motion that we uh, make a recommendation, administrative concurrence for you guys to work this out through your preventing process. And when you get ready to bring it back before us, Miguel, we'll be ready. Okay. Also, along with that, you're going to come informally. Um, um, debrief the Board of Commissioners right. specifically on this one, independent of everything else you got to do as well, make sure that lines up, okay, in case this gets ahead of what you got to do. Can you do that for us? And, and if you guys need me to come sit down with you guys to talk through no, things sure. or any, any additional sure. workshop meetings okay. or whatever, just let me know. Be okay. glad to sit down with you guys. No, I appreciate that. No, no, I, we're, we're good. I'm in the middle of a motion. So I got a motion. Sure. You guys, um, Minister of Concerns to give you. Got a motion in a second. Any more discussion? Okay, are you clear? You got this. Yes. You got the bandwidth? Yes. You got time, you'll go back with Ken. Make sure they got what they want. Mark, we trust you will take care of this. James Jesus. Travis. I said James Travis. Miguel probably he's been involved in the whole thing right. too, so they're all so this is gonna come through planning and zoning more than anything, through some type of ordinance change or yes. see that's what I'm saying, Possibly. Sir. Let it go that route. Mm -hmm. Eventually it'll get to us through the joint meeting, but I, I don't think this is the need to come directly. If there's an ordinance change. Yeah. It'll get to us. You can see, then yes, it would be the plans on it. Planning and zoning with our joint meetings. Yes. Correct. So that's the vehicle in which this, but this okay. This is a pre look. I'm fine with it. I authorize y'all to move as fast as you can, and we'll, we'll double back on our side. Okay. All right. I want to thank you for coming out. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. your time from y'all. Miguel, you know. Oh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any <laughs> decline? Both <laughs> carries. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Miguel, I'm sorry, I, I know you had time, so I want to get you back to your time. How much time we got left? We got well, actually, we, we have uh, successfully gone through the entire agenda. Is there anything else we need to we can run in we need to catch our breath and, and get ready for the meeting? Yeah. At, uh, Are you okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. Is there anything else you need to come before this Board of Commissioners? All right, we'll let this meeting stand adjourned.